it's a new year and we are all looking for new facts. We're looking for new diets. We're looking for ways to improve our lives. Because if you can change this one thing, you can change your destiny. Thank you for joining us. We will start the service by opening in prayer. We will be joined by Olivia Miller, my mother, online. She will be praying in French Creole. As she prays, receive the prayer for yourself and for your goals and your destiny. Now listen as she prays. Oh, Father, I'm coming to you on behalf of your servant who desires to do a good work for you. Open the way for her to go through, light the pathway to guide her. The work must continue without interruption. Let none be able to stop it. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. I'm coming to you on my knees that this assignment is acceptable unto you. We repent of anything that would prevent us from moving forward. Now, O oh God, open the way, open up the pathway wide, and be with your servant. Hold her hand until she reaches her destiny, that no one can stop this work. Father, I thank you in advance. Amen. The title of my message is Burned and Snake Bitten. Now, Google described and defined a tongue as a muscular organ. That means it is a group of tissues with similar functions in the mouth as most vertebrates have. The possession of this is that if you will have a backbone or spinal column. And that is for manipulating food and mastication, which is chewing of the food and also swallowing. But the main function of the tongue its primary function is in the gustatory system. And that basically, it helps us to perceive taste. So that's its main function. But from here, we're going to look at the tongue from a different point of view. We're going to look at it for the power that it has in the words that we speak. 
and that's where we are going. We're going to go to the book of James. The topic for tonight is the tongue. That is what I'm going to deal with. And James chapter three, we're going to start with our key Bible verse. And if you would read with me, James chapter three, starting at verse 13, it says, who is a wise man? And dude with knowledge among you, let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. And verse 14, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Again, who is a wise man? If you are a wise man, according to this scripture, you will show forth out of your mouth a good conversation. Verse one, it says, my brethren, be not many masters known that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. Now this, we go right in immediately, starting with defining what we mean by the tongue, straight into a warning to teachers. If you are a teacher of the word of God, it says, be not many masters. Don't try to be, uh, don't try to have so many teachers. Don't just run into this profession of teaching the word of God because you will have the greater condemnation. That means you have the greater obligation. You have a stricter judgment based on being the teacher. That also means, according to the Bible, he who much has been given to, much is required. So it does not just because you have knowledge, not because you understand the word of God or you're even gifted in the word of God, that does not cause us, cause us to run to the forefront to become teachers. We must take hold of the admonishment and the, and the accountability that comes with teaching. With that said, we can begin to go into the word as it talks not only to the teacher, but also to the disciples of Christ. In verse two, it says, but in many things we offend all. In many things, that there are so many ways that we offend one another. It is very easy for us to offend. Therefore, that ties right back into the fact of the greater condemnation, the greater, the stricter rules of judgment belongs to us because we are the teachers. Therefore, we ought to be the ones showing forth the example. Now, there are many who would say that I'm doing my best. God knows my heart. But the word of God makes it very clear there is a greater condemnation for those who are teachers of the law and of the word of God. Because once again, it is very easy for us to be offensive to all in all ways. It says, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. And you're going to understand this verse a little bit more as we delve further into the word. If any man offend not the word, by word, the same is a perfect man. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. And we always say, there is no one perfect, but we must forget those things that are behind us in 2021 and press forward towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. We must press towards the high calling, the, the perfection, which is in Christ Jesus. So we must be able to 
bridal our tongues. Now this is the little member, the tissue, the tongue. If we are able to bridle, we will be able to control our entire body. So this chapter three, which speaks about bridling the tongue actually is saying, if we can control our mouth and the things that we say, we will be able to control everything in our lives. We'll be able to be successful because we will be disciplined in this one thing. This is the little thing that if you can control, you've got control over everything. And you'll see how that works in just a minute. Now, don't stay where you are. I need you to come with me. The spirit of God is beginning to move and you've got to move from where you are and come with me. You know, this is about the time that we just want to, you know, uh, click out, but don't click out right now. Come with me, come through this journey. And as the spirit is moving, you'll find yourself in a different place. You'll find yourself changed from the inside out, your mindset will be changed. Your way of looking at this year and how you will accomplish the things that you need to accomplish will change. There'll be a shift in the spirit that's going to make a difference in your life. Those fads that we spoke about, those diets and, and trends that we're looking to to bring a different change in our lives, they didn't work last year and they won't work this year. So it is a good thing for us to look for something new because if we keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, we're fooling ourselves. So come with me, don't check out just yet. Okay, so verse three says, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. Now, you know, a stallion is very strong. A horse is a very strong animal and a horse can be wild. But nevertheless, it says that they, we can do this and they will obey us as big as a horse is. But if we put bits in the horse's mouth, they will obey us. Is that true about the tongue of a person we're going to find out and it also will turn about their entire body as big as that animal is it can be mastered it can be controlled by putting bits in its mouth we're talking about treats you give your dogs treats when you're trying to train them to sit and come and and go and fetch we do all of this we do it by simply giving the animal a treat. And we're able to control that animal with that treat. So keep that in mind as we're talking about our topic today, which is the tongue. We are talking about the tongue. And we're going to find out that the tongue is very unruly, even though we can tame animal, wild animals. We can tame big animals by just giving them a treat. Now, verse four says, behold, also the ships. Not only can we control animals, but we can also control a large vessel, such as a great ship. It says, and we do this, and we know also that great ships are driven by very fierce winds, fierce uh, winds will push it in whichsoever direction it wants that vessel or freight ship to go. And it might be a cruise ship, it might be a tanker, it might be uh, a number of different types of uh, seafaring vessels, but nevertheless, the fierce winds can control that vessel. Yet, are they turned about with a very small helm, something very, a very fast vessel, and yet it can be controlled with a very small helm or rudder. So here it is. We see that in summary that 
We can control animals by simply putting bits in their mouth or treats. And we can also control something very large, such as a very, very big ship, whether it's a yacht or whatever it is, it can be controlled through it's the steamer, uh, the, st the seamen or the steermen can control that ship through the helm. And it could turn the entire body around, whether so ever the governor lists it. Even so, in verse five, the tongue, it is a little member in comparison to a ship. It's a little member of even our body. We have other organs in our body, bodies that are much bigger, much greater with even greater importance than, you know, controlling the, our perception of taste. And yet the tongue is a very little member. And yet if we can control our tongue, the Bible says that we can be perfect. Now, don't you want to be perfect or at least work towards perfection? Of course, we all do. That's why we look for these trends. That's why we look for the latest fads. That's why we're into, you know, fashion and, and all these things that improve ourselves. Folk getting that idealism of what perfection is. And not only is the tongue very little, it also boasts great things very, very great things. The tongue is, it almost puts itself in the place of God. It is great. I am awesome. I am great. I can do this. Tomorrow I will do this. Today I will build a bigger barn and I will collect all my goods. I, I will, you know, tomorrow I will go to this place or that place. It acts as if it is God himself. It has a will and it will do this and it boasts of great things, whether it is able to accomplish those things or not, but yet it boasts. It says, I am and I will. And behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. That means these boasting because we said the title of our message is burned. The tongue is able to cause great burning. It is able, the tongue, if it goes out of control, it is like it can set a forest and burn the entire thing down. It's like that. It's like you know, some people say certain things that get so deep in another person's spirit, it burn and it muses and it just destroys that person's spirit. It kills by fire. So it says, behold how great a matter, a little fire kindle it. All it takes, it only takes a spark to get the fire going. And when you look around, the entire place will be burned right down to nothing. So the tongue is, is a very small member in, compar in comparison to a large vessel. It's a very small member of the body. It's a very, very small thing and a very small, several small uh, tissues working together. Nevertheless, the tongue is a fire. This is metaphorically speaking, of course, it is a fire. It works just like a fire. It has the power of consumption like fire does. It can burn anything to the ground. So it is a fire again, metaphorically speaking, a world of iniquity. It is a world of iniquity. Can you imagine the whole world has been corrupted 
by the tongue. Almost every sin that happens to men happens through words. It happens through gossip. It happens through lying. It happens through deception. All done with the tongue. All these iniquities, all these sins, it can fill the world. The world is filled with the iniquities of the mouth and the tongue and the lips. So, so is the tongue among our members that it defiled the entire body. So with this little tongue, we can say something that just totally causes us to be defiled. You could have, you could have had a good intention in one moment, in the next moment, you say something out of your mouth that is so devastating. It could be something that you've said that hurts someone else so drastically. It can even be self-talk that you said to yourself that has hurt you and wounded your spirit so badly that you want to die. That's the power of words because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, it comes out of the mouth. So when this type of thing is coming out of your mouth, it is already an in indicative of what's inside of you, what's going on in the inner man. So we have to watch what we say, not only watching what we say, but how do we say it? What type of tone of voice do we speak with? And how do our words impact other people? So it can, it has the possibility to defile the entire body. And it says, see it, uh, and also set it on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Out of all the fires in the world that the tongue can be set on, it is set on the fire of hell. And this is why we must get control of our tongue. This is a tongue is out of control. It's untamable. It wants to do and say, whatever it wants to do or say, whatever there are some people, whatever thoughts come into their minds, they just simply say it. They do not weigh their words and the impact that it might have on the ears of the hearer and the heart of the hearer. So they say whatever they want to say when they want to say it. But this is not wise. It's not prudent to carry your life like this because once again, your perfection and your perfecting of your heart comes from what's coming out of your mouth. So you must train yourself to come under the control of the Holy Spirit and not to have your tongue operating from the position of hell. Hell comes to kill. Hell comes to steal. Hell comes to destroy life. Hell comes to destroy your destiny. Whether it's your life or someone else's, if you allow your, the tongue that is set on the fire of hell to go unchecked and to just blaze and devour everything in its path, much destruction will take place. Verse seven, for every kind of beast and of birds and serpents, these are the vertebrates we're talking about, and of things in the sea, uh, the fish, they're all tamed. They all can be tamed, just like that horse, just like that, uh, that vessel, that boat, that great ship, they all can be tamed. So almost everything that has a, a, t a vertebrae is tameable. But we learn here, everything can be tamed by mankind except the tongue. The tongue cannot be tamed. Did you hear that? 
Your tongue cannot be tamed by you. No man can tame it. You know, a parent might, might uh, discipline a, a child very harshly for something that they've said. They might have them wash your mouth with soap, but nevertheless, the next opportune time when it comes up, they're going to say something they ought not to say because the Bible tells us that the tongue cannot be tamed by men. It cannot be controlled. It cannot be brought into subjection by force by any person, place, or thing. It's not possible. Verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And there it is, snake bitten. Snake bitten, not only burned up by the words of someone else. You know, you will never make it. You'll never amount to anything. You're, uh, you know, people um, saying such negative things into your spirit to burn up your, your motivation, to burn up your desire to do well, to just discourage you. Because not only is that that fire, but there's also the poison of asp. Asp. The poison of snakes. Snake bitten, deadly poison in the tongue. We got the fire of hell and we have the poison of snakes and with that tongue we glorify god we're in the house of god we're giving him praise hallelujah which is the highest praise we're giving him glory glory unto god and the next moment we can turn around and say the nastiest thing to a person and the bible says Thereby, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse, we curse each other, we curse men, which are made in the similitude of God. So here we are, the, the tongue, the character of the tongue is unstable. It's not going to stay on one course, the course of glorifying God, blessing our brothers and our sisters. It, it refused to stay in one course. So it goes back and forth. It flip flops. It's unstable in its blessing. And these things we're going to learn are not to be. Because our brothers and our sisters are made in the similitude of God. So when we curse them, we might as well curse God because he is their maker. Whatever fault we find in our brothers or our sisters is a fault that we actually find in God. So we must not do these things. Verse 10, one of the same, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things again ought not, they are not to be. And it, the word of God asks us in verse 11, does a fountain send forth from the same place both bitter and sweet water? Does a spring bring forth both, both fresh water and a salt water? Is it possible for one spring? Everything maintain its course. You will never find a cat that barks they maintain their course the the spring water the river it's going to run its course it's going to run its path the sun is going to go to and forth fro in the same path on its axles it's going to rotate as it's designed to do but not the tongue of man it is unruly it cannot be tamed it cannot be ruled it's set on the course of hell and it will bring forth hell so therefore we must get an understanding. We must be wise this year. We must make up in our mind, not just our mental mindset. We must go deep 
deeper and deeper, not only in our soul, but it must come all the way down in our spirit, the real you, your spirit. Spirit man must make a decision this year that I must change. I must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that these things in my life can come under subjection, that the Holy Spirit of God can make a difference in my life. Because we ask again, can the fig tree bring forth olives? Is it possible that we can find oranges on an apple tree? That's not possible. It goes against nature and even the character and the nature of the particular object. Therefore, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. It's not possible. So how is it? that we do, this, we do this with our mind. We bring forth curses and blessing. Determine in your heart today that you're going to be a blesser and not a curser, a lover and not a hater. In your heart, these decisions must be made. So I hope this word has been helpful to you. Again, learn a lesson today that no man can control his tongue. I know in my own life, I have made decisions. I am going to control my mouth. It doesn't last very long. We can even make decisions that what we're going to do is we're going to take a vow of silence. That is not the way to learn to control your tongue. It will not benefit you just to keep quiet. But we must bring our tongues under the subjection of the Holy Spirit and he will control us. We can ask God to put a guard at the mouth of the, at the gate of our mouths daily. We can repent when we get it wrong. We can learn how to say sorry this year. We can ask for forgiveness because when we offend others, we offend in every way. And we cause our entire body to be defiled, not just the hearer, but ourselves also. I hope this word has been very encouraging to you. I'm so grateful that you joined me. And I'm just asking, Holy Father, I just ask you to give, give us strength this year to run this race that is set before us, God. Help us, Lord God, to learn self-control, to learn patience, gentleness, and to learn to be as you are, Father, through your Holy Spirit. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. And against such there is no law. Amen.